Yo, yo, 63. Oh, hell yeah. Hitting it here for another episode. Uh, I'm Bobby. Dylan. Jerry. Well, what's up, Jerry? It's been a while. Yeah. Yeah, man. Nice to see you. <laughs> yeah, if you Welcome. can see the letters above me. We know, <laughs> know. what Jerry's already been doing. <laughs> we, yeah. we'll, we'll get to that. Yeah, uh, but we'll start yeah. with... Uh, Joey's not here very mysteriously. Is somewhere else. Uh, but he was here last week for the spooky episode. Our, our, our amazingly night. coordinated Halloween special. Oh, hell yeah. That came Perfect. out after Halloween. Mm-hmm. Uh, we should just do that from now. We should put out the holiday specials after the holiday. <laughs> yeah, like honestly, I think Christmas should be on the 29th. I think it should be on the second week of January. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I'm being real. Uh, make sure to go ahead and like. Make sure to go ahead and subscribe. Hell yeah. Bell. Hit that Ring bell. Stay ding. notified. We got some oh, uploads like coming your way. Gotta uh, show up. And yeah, let's, uh, let's delve into this thing we do every week yeah. for like an hour. Right. Weekly pod and more shit now because of phase two. Mm-hmm. Right. Some fears, some uh, some chef son in the in the works. I have a, a lit's play coming out super soon, and uh, even some more content. A big, coming. a big. Some would say backlog. Some would say a horde mm-hmm. of content. A vault, if yeah. you would. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. So, oh. so uh, combination. What have you boys been up to? Can we start with Jerry? Oh, I haven't seen Jerry. Yeah, we'll start with Jerry. It's been a, a fat uh, fortnight and a half. Yeah, fortnight. Fork knife. Fork, Fork knife. What's right. Up with you bud. So I don't know. I've just been chilling, man. You know, living life. You know, visiting family and stuff. Oh yeah, you were with Andy last yeah, week. Yeah, I went to Jersey by train first time. How was, was the uh, How was the experience of living in the uh, in the rural kind of, not rural, but you know. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. It's like uh, like, not far out of New York. I don't know. Mm-hmm. It still feels like New York. How'd you bit. get there? Uh, path or path? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. How long is that ride? I've yeah. taken it. To be honest, it wasn't that bad. It's kind of just like, like path train's pretty quick. It's like trying to get. To Brooklyn, like in a specific place in Brooklyn, you know, it takes like two hours sometimes. Mm-hmm. It's like that same kind of like vibe. Man, I know, I know what he's saying. I mean, I used to commute yeah. two hours yeah. every day from fucking here to Brooklyn College. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like exactly. Every honestly, my school commutes like that because it's either like an hour or an hour and forty minutes. It's like it's random exactly. every time. I never know how long it's gonna take me. Yeah, fuck New York. <laughs> <laughs> sometimes it's good though. I've never taken the pass train. I've always only driven into uh, Jersey. They have a ferry too, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. And the ferry's right. free if the path train isn't working. Mm. So that's mm. how I like help you out. Where does the ferry stop at? Like in New York. Uh there's one stop by like forty second street and then there's another stop downtown. Mm. Or it's like there's one that goes one way, one that goes another. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And they also have like NY Waterway probably does like Hoboken, because all those towns are like huge now. Yeah. Yeah. Like Hoboken, West New York, they're like really nice. So mm-hmm. weird. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. So Jerry, yeah, you've been that, coding, I mean, just been like coding and shit. Yeah, yeah. Very yeah cool. we were just talking to fucking. Uh, so the reason that I'm not on the podcast a lot nowadays is because like Thursdays and Fridays are like my my pack days, and sometimes the podcast falls on those days. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I'll just be like mad drained afterwards. So, like, so I'm just like, which is perfectly you know, fine. Yeah, I'm just like, there's days that I don't want to do this show and I have to do it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or to school. Yeah. For I mean, reference, those are the episodes where shit doesn't spark up until ten minutes in. <laughs> and then you're like, oh, and yeah. then we're like, oh yeah, <laughs> fucking, yeah, this is a show, right? But uh, <laughs> like, I don't know. That class is fun because like sometimes like like right now, uh, for example, like our main instructor is on vacation, right? Mm-hmm. So like the, you got a sub. No, we have like two. In, we have like two um in like assistant instructors, mm-hmm. oh, so they're like okay. taking over. But like they're like more chill about it. So like we're, <laughs> we'll just be like chill, we'll just be like making memes and shit. So like uh, (laughs) there's a part where like uh, we have like a like a like a guest speaker or something like that. And he came in and he was like he was like leading like a meditation. Very nice. For the coding class. Amazing. This is great. No, because you have to you talk. It's like about like self-improvement and stuff like that. Uh So like um, that's important. So some people leave their he's like we're doing a meditation exercise and some people leave their like mics on. And like no, some people not their mics on, but their video on. Uh Okay. So he's like, close your eyes and blah, blah, blah. And while he's and they're, while they're doing this, some people are like screenshotting people's <laughs> faces with their closed <laughs> eyes. And so later, like when the class is done and the guest leaves and the guest speaker is gone, like 
the future classes, <laughs> there's people who put their background as the people. <laughs> <in high school. laughs> <It's> meditating. <laughs> That's great. It looks hilarious, bro. <laughs> oh my god! Oh my god! Bro, there was like ten minutes where people just like cracking up with that shit. I don't oh know. my god! No, there was people in my summer class that would uh, put themselves in like the they would have the green screen right and on Zoom, but in the background it'd be like porn scenes. <laughs> oh my god. So it'd be like four black dudes standing around him <laughs> with like shirts and like, like that no... Piper Perry yeah, yeah, thing. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like that exact format. And he's like, "You think they'll notice?" And it's like, "No, it's like a fifty-five-year-old Middle Eastern dude. He is gonna have no idea." <laughs> Nobody's done that yeah. fucking crazy oh, man. shit. We only have like 30 people in a class. So like, I mean, like you do something, people notice. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You, have to, you have to do it for the jokes. Yeah. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> I was going to say. Know. A lot of people do like weed backgrounds. They put like anime backgrounds and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. The Hokage Mountain. <laughs> <laughs> They've done that. <laughs> <laughs> Knew it. Literally. <laughs> Fuck, I forgot what I was watching mad randomly, but I was watching something where some, like they asked something about Mount Rushmore. It was like a game show thing or like a question. It wasn't a game show, but it was like a trivia question that someone mm-hmm. was answering. And the person who answered like answered thinking that Mount Rushmore wasn't real because he only knew the mountain from Naruto. So he was like that. And they're like, yeah, but you know that there's like a mountain in the United States with like the president's heads on it. And right. he's like, like the Hokage Mountain? And he's like, like, bro. like <laughs> <laughs> It's a thing. It's, it's, yeah. it's history, bro. It's probably what inspired that shit. Yeah. <laughs> You tell me it's inspired by something? Oh, like it's the not original? Like the like the sign in GTA it's 5? Like the, it's like the or, people that are like in the hills? It's like the memes where they're like The Los Santos sign? Where they, they show pictures of Master Chief and they're like the head the, the the Fortnite guy. Oh my god. <laughs> the guy from Fortnite. Where? Yeah, Amazing. from Smash Bros. <laughs> well, you been exactly. up to Dilla? Yeah, so I've just been watching a lot of YouTube content. I'm doing a lot of studying right now. Some tests that fell in some awkward situations, but mm-hmm. you know. Word. Uh, I mean, you know, since we do a podcast, I've been watching a lot of podcasts. Um, I have two actually. Yeah, a lot. So, firstly, like uh, I've been watching uh, Two Bears One Cave, which is mm-hmm. always really good. Right. Uh, I'm seeing Bert tomorrow at MSG. Oh, you are. I'm very cool, excited. Cool. Nice. Uh, I'm probably gonna see Tom whenever he comes. Next. Oh, I want to see Tom. Too. I definitely want to see Tom. What was I gonna say? Not to cut you off, but funny enough, I actually saw one of my friends on Instagram posted like a story, and they were mm-hmm. like, "I've got two tickets for Bert Kreischer tomorrow. If anybody was gonna- wants them," and I f- was low key like. Mm-hmm. Mm, and I was yeah. like, maybe not, but yeah. very cool. And then uh, I watched this uh, hockey podcast, and now they went from having one show two times a week, and now they have eight shows. Wow! And their own app on the app store. Jeez. Wow! And they just like expanded their business business outward. Phase four, uh, guys. So phase <laughs> fa- phase eight. We're gonna. Yeah. Have we're gonna have a whole, you know, a Jerry's network. Gonna, Jerry's gonna have the website running. Let's yeah. fucking go, Jerry. <laughs> Easy. Someone's gonna be the official CFO yeah. running that shit. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll have it. But uh, yeah, I mean, it's just seeing that kind of expansion is really cool and motivational on our end because, like, we're also upping the game in terms mm-hmm. of like, and you know, beyond phase two, we want to do a lot of live action. I stuff. I want to talk about that too later. Like, too, yeah. you know, filming actual us doing shit. Yeah, you know, yeah. moving. Just like having fun. It's yeah, just yeah, the main yeah. Point. literally. Just and like, like I'll, I'll touch more on it too, but around. like, I was it was explaining it to Dylan. Like, I love doing the joystick show, and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. Every but, week, but it's limiting. Yeah, but it's it is limiting, and it's also just kind of like not tiring, but it's boring after a while because you know if you watch the show, you see I I throw in my edits every now and then, especially like the last Halloween when I threw in a lot of extra random oh, shit I love, there. I love I love shit. But like you know, it, I edited something recently. What was it, it was fear. Like, mm-hmm. I got to edit that, and I was like, wow, this is way more fun because it's shorter, and it's, like, different. Oh, it's based around getting reactions and shit like that. You know what I mean? So right. I just kind of, like... Oh, yeah, oh. Because at that point, you're just, like, almost setting up timing. Almost yeah, yeah, for yeah, jokes, yeah. you know? So I want to, like, set up more videos in that aspect because they're more fun both for us to make, and they're also more fun to edit. And mm-hmm. I think at the end, <laughs> at the long run, they'll be more fun to watch, too, because... Well, All right. We'll get into those. I mean, and sometimes we just end up like uh, talking about stuff that we maybe would have liked to record also. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Always. You know, it's just better to like capture it. Definitely. Mm hmm. And but that was yeah, a lot of motivation for like this, you know, pod- podcasts in general. That's how they grew so big. Yeah. Not right. only do people like conversation, but it's like, hey, like you would even think like, oh, remember when we had that funny conversation? Yeah. It's like, now it, now it exists. Right. What was, uh, <laughs> I don't know why that managed to jump into my head. I was watching, uh, 
as most people watch, especially after he sadly passed away, a Norm Macdonald compilation. Oh, I, I, oh I'm yeah. not Norm posting yeah. the best videos. And there was a, there was a fucking famous uh, scene. I, you probably all seen it, but there's a clip where he's like at a, doing a news interview, like an early morning thing. And the woman on it, because he's like cracking jokes with like the anchor man. It's like four people on the desk, including Norm. Yeah. And she's like, wow, there's like a whole like streamline of stuff going on here. And then Norm is like, yeah, it's called conversation. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like shuts her up. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Wow. Oh, he's incredible. Like he, he, they have him on any show. It's just, it's incredible. I love Norm. Yeah, yeah. He'll just, he, he just, very good. Yeah, oh, I didn't man. know about him for a long time. Oh, Norm is the As fucking like a comedian. Go, bro. Yeah. An absolute legend. It like, was, it was funny because I was watching, uh, I was watching one of my all-time favorite yeah. movies last night. I was watching Billy Madison. Okay, yes. Uh, to put it into perspective, I love Happy Gilmore a lot more than Billy Madison. But I have both. I have reached. Oh, oh my god, I can't even speak. I have watched both of them recently, and I've discovered something. I think Happy Gilmore is a better story overall. Oh yeah, it's sure. a much more cohesive story. You know what I mean? Like. The, it's the it's the it's story like, it's like of, the rise and fall and it, rise it's like a it's whole like thing. it's like the story of a guy who finds out he has major talent in a sport he never cared about and does it so that he can you know help support his grandma like that combined with a story about a guy who has to go from pre-k to 12th grade in like fucking two months just some yeah, shit like yeah, that it's yeah, a very yeah, different yeah, yeah, plot yeah. line but i think billy madison has way more like amazing one-line jokes well, well, like well, right that's off the, the thing is that, that billy mad like i mean happy gilmore is definitely very slapstick also yeah but i would feel like but uh, billy madison is just it's kind of like family guy it's like literally one dumbass random yeah. joke and followed by and i feel one. like the that the 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 lack of plot or the the thinner plot adds to that yeah just having a concept like that like a like a comparable why i'm thinking of this as a comparable but the woody allen film bananas okay where he it's like it's like a eight seventy minute film and it's like this crazy plot where he like starts a revolution in a foreign country uh-huh and oh you've told me about yeah, this. yeah, yeah and yeah, it's yeah. literally like 70 minutes so it's like it starts off and then they're, they're in new york city and it's like 10 minutes and you're like all right this guy's to start picking up and then all of a sudden it's like boom he meets fidel castro he kills him it's like this whole thing but it's a you know thin plot yeah but uh i was watching it and you know i was looking up a bunch of scenes and there one of my favorite scenes of billy madison is and you'll see where this goes into norm mcdonald there's a, a very funny scene that i when i watched the movie yesterday i totally just disregarded that that scene was in the movie it was almost like i was watching a brand new scene in this movie for the first mm. time it's the scene in the movie early on where Billy convinces his dad to basically let him try to do the the grades mm-hmm. pre-K through 12th. And his dad is like, I like the idea. We'll give it a shot. And after the conversation is done, they, the three of them leave. And <laughs> Billy's just going up, up the stairs. And I'll Tumble For You by Culture Club starts playing very randomly. And it turns into like a weird two minute see- sequence where Adam Sandler is just randomly dancing to this song on a staircase yeah, 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 for yeah. no reason. Mm-hmm. Like after it's done, it just cuts to the next scene. But uh, after I, but before that scene happens, uh, the character of Carl is in the scene. He's like this old guy. And spoiler alert for Billy Madison, Carl's the guy who ends up getting the the company at the end of the movie. Yeah. But I was like, damn, Carl's like old in that movie. So I was like, I wonder how old he is now. So I looked it up and I was like, damn, he's like 88 or something like that. And he's that. still alive? Wow. Yeah, he's still alive. And then I was like thinking, I was like, I wonder how many people like passed away from that movie. And then I was like, Norm MacDonald was in fucking Billy Madison. And he's one of like the few people that passed away. It's just yeah. fucking mind blowing. And I, he was pretty old too. That's something I never think of. And it's weird. Cause it's like, I watch a lot of old movies. Mm-hmm. I like, uh, I forgot. I was watching, uh, the exorcist three during Halloween and like, uh, you know, George C. Scott and a bunch of these old, I'm and, and the, a lot of the movie has to do with like the possession of old people. Yeah. So there's a lot of old people in that movie. And I'm like, damn, old, damn. They're, yeah, yeah that's, that's what I sad. think too. Is, yeah, I was like, oh shit, I never. But like, that's kind of in a mind. sad way. That's why I look it up immediately. I'm like, I wonder right. if these people are still around, yeah. like, because they were old back then. Like, yeah. Uh, sad. fucking Norm Macdonald. No, I was gonna end it with. Uh, I saw one last <laughs> clip I'd actually never seen before. It was a, I think it was his podcast, but it's him with his son, like his adult son, and his adult son is like reading jokes for him. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, yeah. every time that his son reads a joke, Norm just says nothing. He's just like. Man, like he's just like <laughs> mad harsh. How can you possibly? Like, yeah, right. How can you possibly impress Norm Macdonald with a no, joke? No, but he's not the, gonna laugh. Like his outright. podcast was also like the weirdest yeah. format because it wouldn't be his. It would be like fan written jokes, <laughs> but then he would make the guest read it, 
and then he'd react to it and he'd be like, ah, that's funny. <laughs> and it's like, you made him read it. My favorite one that this son read was, and it's so funny because his son does the delivery perfectly. Like, obviously, if you've lived with Norm McDonald being your father for that long, you've got to pick it up. Yeah. But the, he said the joke, he was like, I'm on a strict seafood diet. And then, you know, I'm expecting the typical joke. He's like, I see food. And if it's fish, I eat it. I wasn't <laughs> expecting the fish part, so I started fucking cracking up. But Norm is like rock solid, and he cracks like a little smile, and he's like, Aggie's work. <laughs> it's like fucking legend, man. <laughs> Smallest little thing. If oh. it's fish, I eat yeah. My work. And besides that, I've just been watching, uh, besides podcasts, uh, Bobby was talking about since he was getting a new TV, he was watching Falling Asleep to YouTube. Which is what I do. And I've been watching a lot of just like... But the weird thing is I watch a lot of like... During Halloween, I was watching a lot of like scary story type stuff. Fall right asleep. Uh, and now I'm watching like missing persons, murder stuff, cold case type things. Not scary stuff. <laughs> Fall, just again, right asleep. And I think it has to just do with like the deep low cadence of a lot of these like yeah. YouTubers. Or even if it's like slightly whiny. If it's like low still, it's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I've been watching this one guy. His name is The Missing Enigma. Yeah. And he hand draw he hand draws photos to go along with the story. Mm. So it'll be like a story about a kid going missing in like West Virginia. And then it'll be like it'll have his last known location. He draws the location with pencil. It's like really interesting. And uh but every video has a hint about Bigfoot and aliens. Uh huh. But he doesn't ever say it. <laughs> Like there's uh even there's famous stories there's like a hundred stories of people of kids, uh getting lost or getting abducted and when they're being you know, conf- t- you know at interviewed the kids are like oh a bear took care of me for two days, and everyone's like what a bear took care of a person and the guy's like yeah a bear <laughs> captured a kid and it's like insinuated like yeah. It's yeah. Big, it's big. You know, and I finally I watched like one of his first videos because I was like, I found the newer ones first because that's what popped up on my recommended. And I went back and then in this one, he's like, now, guys, I don't want to insinuate, but there's this cryptid called Bigfoot. And I'm like, there it is. He said <laughs> there's it. the allegation. There it is. And the, but besides that, he never like outwardly. And it's interesting because it's like um, also a lot of times he, he also like debunks other ones also cryptids or or yeah like when people go missing and oh, they're just like, like okay yeah right. yeah and they're like oh foul play he got murdered and it's like well he was a guy with heart problems climbing a mountain and then he <laughs> fell off the mountain <laughs> they're like what else did you think happened he had already the right? mountain committed foul play yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, or they were like oh he had to get murdered i'm like no the, or it's like the person or someone like you know someone who gets caught in like a storm or something and freezes to death mm. or they get like hypothermia because they fall in freezing water and it's like oh i think they got murdered it's like mm, i'm pretty sure they you know yeah. sadly something you know it was an accident it wasn't mm-hmm. or bigfoot you know Yo, missing person's been a super hot topic lately, mm-hmm. man. In the news, especially yeah. too, with like and all these people all... they found, like on mm-hmm. this whole like a... trying like, to find Gabby yeah. and Gabby Petito and Brian Laudry and all the people they found on the yeah, way. That's yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's insane. Mm-hmm. And also, there's like this weird thing. This is also this weird concept of missing time, which I don't really believe in. But essentially, where like people will go missing for like weeks and they'll be okay, mm-hmm. like they'll be perfectly fine. But they they were like, oh, I thought I was missing for like three days, but it was actually three weeks. Oh, okay. And like that's like a huge phenomenon that happens all the time. Yeah. And people think it's like, oh, aliens came and took them for two weeks, and then they end up back, or like a Bigfoot takes mm-hmm. them. I actually, I actually just read like two missing persons things, two missing persons things today. One of them was a uh, a baby who was stolen from a campsite. Oh shit! I think in Australia. Holy crap! Like she was with her parents, but somebody like went into the tent while they were sleeping and took the child. And then the child was missing for 18 days, and they finally found her when they raided a house in their hometown. Wow. Yeah. Crazy. And uh, the craziest thing about it was they have, like, the footage of it. It looks like it's almost like a news reporter when, like, the police go in and find her. And then the pol- one of the policemen come out with, like, the the baby on, like, the shoulder or whatever. She's probably, like, a one, two-year-old, like, a toddler. Mm-hmm. And the reporter's like, don't worry. We're going to take you to mommy and daddy now. But it's like, damn. Like, this is, like, in the moment. Like, as it's That's happening. insane. That's actually really cool. And the other one was... Uh, like a cold case of a woman who went missing, like I think it was 30, almost 40 years ago. Uh, like she left the party at two in the morning when she was like in her 20s and like disappeared. Nobody knew what happened to her yeah. after that. And like recently they found remains in a river. 
and apparently it like matches up to like the cold case or whatever. So now it's like they're reopened yeah, and they're now re-opened. genealogy. I was reading over a hundred and fifty cold cases have been solved since twenty nineteen. Wow. That's crazy. And they just do it through because now everyone uploads their DNA to like stuff yeah, and all that. Tree, so now, I mean, and anyone now just uploads DNA to the internet. So now we have like everyone, like not everyone, but like a lot of people. Yeah. And it's like the possibilities are like, and then they go in and they're like, we went in and he had a coffee <laughs> he, and he had a small two scoop from Baskin Robbins and we took the spoon and then that matched the deal. I'm like, well, okay. I just like, love the idea of like a prolific <clears throat> serial killer who's gotten away with it all these years one day just being like, I check my history. I want to see like what I am. <laughs> oh my god! And even then, even if it's not that, it's like they find your cousin, but then they know that it's like it can only be like you know. Oh, it has to be a man in their thirties, and he looks like this, and he has blonde hair. Only two of them match that, and one of them he doesn't fit. He had an alibi. Okay, boom. Yeah, yeah I see and they, that. so that's what they do. Like they literally, because it's like an advancement in DNA, but it really is like old school detective work. Because you're like literally building like a map of like a family tree and then seeing who fits the profile yeah, right and that's and it's like, only getting easier to do yeah. that now so i mean very cool and also i found out that like they purposefully make like this you ever see like a sketch and the person looks really stupid mm-hmm. they do that on purpose they make the person they they make the features that are defining more defining so that yeah you, yeah you pay attention to so them. someone has a big nose they give you a giant nose because they're yeah. like you're gonna notice the nose yeah or like if you have like protruding cheekbones they'll really protrude them and i was like oh that's interesting you know it's mm. weird to like not make you but then again it's like yeah. someone sketching isn't gonna get you 100 percent accurately anyway yeah exactly I wonder how good of an artist you have to be to land that job. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> be great if, it'd be great. <laughs> future, future sketch idea, like the worst sketch artist. He's like the stick figure fall. No, no, it's like they're taking it, and then when it turns around, it's like one of those shitty carnival caricatures, like with yeah. the the beach yeah. ball and a snow yeah. cone. Like really Did he look like this? Yeah. Oh my god. Where <laughs> it's like a husband and wife caricature. <laughs> <laughs> at had, the beach wildwood new jersey I had, a, I had a video idea recently yeah like, i guess this video idea we'll talk into some of the other stuff that we have like you know on the on the on the burners or whatever yeah but fucking uh <clears throat> so i've been playing a lot of kingdom hearts yeah. uh you know a couple weeks ago or a few weeks ago at this Ka-ching! point they mentioned that uh sora was gonna be in smash bros oh and right That's that just kind of led to me going on a kingdom hearts binge where i was like i haven't played the games in a while and i play them all the time like i always find like at least once a year to go back and enjoy those games so i loaded up the collection i've been playing them through i'm even playing birth by sleep which is the psp one and i haven't played that one in years i'm having a lot of fun with it but uh, recently, I watched the video that didn't come out recently. It's a video by Barry from Barry Kramer, the original editor for Game Grumps. Yeah. So he has a really popular video on his personal channel called a, called a Good Enough Summary of Kingdom Hearts. Have you ever seen this video? Maybe. It's fucking hilarious. So essentially what it is is he had a friend who knows everything about Kingdom Hearts. And that friend basically sat down in a live stream and told Barry everything that he knows about Kingdom Hearts from like chronologically from the first game to the last game that was out at the point. And he tries to like telephone it. And then he takes, exactly. And it's, <laughs> and it's like animated. A, and, so and he there's animates jokes and... it, exactly. So it's fucking hilarious, the, the things he says. Like one of my favorite jokes is he talks about KH1. So he's like, so then you fight Ansem and for some reason Ansem turns into a boat. <laughs> and then in the, the second game, he's like, so you fight Xemnas and for some reason Xemnas is a boat. <laughs> And then, like, you know, in the it's third true. Kingdom Hearts game, you could do the pirate ship command. So yeah. it's like in Kingdom Hearts 3, it's like, so you fight Xehanort, but this time you're the boat. <laughs> it's so fucking dumb. But, uh, but I was watching that video, and it's so good, and it inspired me. I low-key want to make a video where I get drunk and then sit in front of a camera, and I try to explain the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Or just any, yeah. Or like a specific, yeah, yeah to yeah. where we are now, and then take that and try to make something funny out of it. Yeah, or you could just edit it down. Be like, yeah, exactly. All right. and then it was, I've been like, re-watching all the Avengers. Yeah. Yeah. And even yeah. then, you could even do a thing where, like, as you go on, you get drunker. Yeah, right. So then it, like, it just cuts, and you're like, <laughs> and then it's just like, Shang-Chi. Thor. <laughs> Nick. Yuri. <laughs> so then they were fighting. <laughs> And then Scarlet Witch is like, yo, Red Blast. I'm going to make this town in New Jersey a different town. <laughs> <laughs> My town. Fucking, uh, I saw Eternals yesterday. Yeah. Speaking of the right. Marvel Cinematic Universe. Wait, before you speak about, before you talk about that movie, can we talk about 
uh, the Morbius trailer. Have you seen that? We can talk about the Morbius trailer if you want to talk about yeah. it. Because that shit I've looks not, pretty I've good. I have not seen the Morbius trailer. Uh, you know Morbius? The yeah, idea I, I know. Jared Leto yeah. mm-hmm. playing the vampire guy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the new trailer came out this week, and it looks very fucking good. Yeah, it does. I'm not going to yes. lie. Very cool. For, for, so, like, for me, uh, and I'm actually going to talk more about this in Eternals when we get to that in a bit. Uh, as if like a filmmaker and somebody who like you know very much likes cinematography and just things of that nature mm-hmm. when it comes to like movies i don't know how to explain it like the best way but i feel like there's like a look to superheroes and to superpowers that when i see it i like it because that's how i would do it mm-hmm. and i got that feeling from the morbius trailer there's like these really cool scenes where because the whole thing is he's like a vampire and he has like enhanced right. strength and speed yeah. but there's like the scene where he's like in a warehouse and he's taking out like five dudes with guns but it's like a slow motion scene where it ramps up when he's going to the next guy and strikes and then it speeds up when he's going to the next guy so it's awesome because you get to see all these little like details and the camera like yeah. shifts with it i just love shit like that yeah very cool so is that movie like do you think that they're doing that because they're making Blade? I think they're going to tie them somehow. Yeah. I, d- I don't think that they're making it because of that, but I think it'd be really hard to acknowledge vampires in the Loki show, yeah. have Morbius come out, and then have Blade with Mahershala Ali coming out like in two years and not have it acknowledge uh, Morbius. Where, so you know what I mean? Yeah, it, all kinds of In the problem. lore, doesn't Blade get his power from Morbius or something like that? I'm not sure entirely, honestly. Okay, if that's the case, then that's definitely uh, yeah. above that's my, the next movie. Blades you know? above my pay grade, I gotta that's say. That's after that, yeah. <laughs> uh, Very also, also uh, whatchamacallit, there's a lot of questions as to what universe it's gonna exist in. Yeah, because uh, there's this whole thing. So it's like, it's not as, it's weird because there's like a part in the trailer where he walks past a mural of Spider Man, but it's Toby's Spider Man. Mm-hmm. And then there's like a part where he's like reading the Daily Bugle. And uh, or or somebody's holding the Daily Bugle, and the article suggests that it's like a different universe. And then there's the part where this guy's in it, uh, the guy who played Vulture in Spider Man. Uh, what's his name? Batman. Uh, Mike Michael Keaton. Okay. So fucking Michael Keaton's in it. So it it insinuates that it's in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So it's like it's a bunch of like yeah, things like that. that. Like comes up to him and is like, uh, let's keep in touch. I think it's him. It was a uh, who. Michael Keaton, oh, Vulture, okay. Okay. the old guy. Yeah. That he's in prison. Was he? Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. But long story short, it, it looks promising. And there's also a pretty, the, the way the trailer ends is a funny part where like he, he stops like a guy with a knife and the guy's like, he's, he's like, who are you? And he's like, I am Venom. And then it's like the teeth thing yeah. with his fangs. And the guy gets scared and he's like, nah, I'm kidding. I'm Dr. Michael Morbius. And he like pats him <laughs> on the shoulder or whatever. But I low key like feel like if he knows Venom and Venom exists in that, in that universe which it does because there's another part in the trailer where they're like this we haven't had something this good since san francisco and it's referencing the first venom movie yeah yeah, yeah. so if that happens and considering the time bang post credit skip that we talked about weeks ago in the new venom movie mm-hmm. does that automatically assume that they're both in the mcu now you know what i mean because he's that he existed in that universe and that universe yeah. changed mm-hmm. so it's like a uh, whole bunch of things are being aligned essentially right and it's also funny because like uh I guess I'll, I'll move it into Eternals now because what I was going to say, this is spoiler free for Eternals, 100%. But they're, like, it's funny because now that we know that the time bang is a thing and now that we've mm-hmm. seen it established in like other media, right. like now whenever I see anything in like a Marvel movie, I'm like, this is it, this is going to be the time bang. And then, <laughs> and then it's not. It's just like an ex- a distant explosion or a thunderstorm and I'm like... Okay, like, <laughs> but now I feel like every time I watch one of these movies, I'm just gonna be like, "That was it! That was it! This is it's gonna, gonna happen. happen!" Though it's gonna, yeah, and we're the- gonna be watching Hawkeye when it comes out. It's gonna happen, <laughs> but uh, but no, Eternals was, was pretty cool, pretty fucking cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember earlier you said that you said it didn't feel like a Marvel movie. Yeah, critics didn't like it. I read some things. Okay, first off, I saw a couple of critics say that the visual effects of the movie were not up to par and those people could shut the fuck up because i actually thought these were some of the best visual effects that i have seen in a marvel movie and Mm -hmm. i'll get to that in a second uh what i will what i do kind of understand is uh i think i told you guys this earlier and they mentioned it like a while before the movie came out is they said that like 50 percent of the movie deals with like the past and all of the events because obviously the eternals are eternal they've been on earth for like seven thousand plus years a long time so like half of the movie is flashbacks and seeing how they've come to where they are present day and And then the other half of the movie is shit that like furthers phase four and stuff like that but where a lot of critics were upset with and i can get it i mean i'm a big fan of the marvel movie so shit like that doesn't really like bother me 
and uh, keep in mind, like I kind of go into Marvel movies already knowing that this is a 25 plus movie with four TV. Like this shit is convoluted as fuck. There's a lot going on here. Uh, but critics didn't like that. The story kind of goes up and down in terms of like flashback present, flashback present. And I will agree. There's even some times where it doesn't feel like, uh, clear enough. Mm -hmm. Like the set will change and you'll be in a new thing, but you're like, are we in present day in a new location or are we in like, I don't know, fucking Mesopotamia or some shit like that. (laughs) It's really hard to tell. Right. Cause there's, there's a couple of, cause there's a couple of times where like it'll change and it tells you on the bottom left, like there's a a lower third and it'll be like the place and the time or whatever like that. But then there's sometimes they don't do that. Ooh. And it's like, I like that. Like what the fuck is going on here? You know what I mean? Like, I kind of like that. Yeah. I was like, Ooh, you have to figure it out. Uh, I don't want everything spoon fed to me. Yeah. People said that it didn't feel like, a marvel movie and i kind of felt that way too but i like that a lot uh it felt really refreshing what's cool is the eternals as i pre- previously mentioned they've been around for quite a bit so it's really interesting to see how uh the movie kind of shows how the eternals fit into like real world historic events yeah and how because you know there's always like these questions like even in the trailer they say the thing like why didn't you help fight thanos and shit like that mm-hmm. fuck thanos like imagine you know all these wars and all these events that have happened in the world that actually right. like breaks them down and shows what the Eternals were doing and you know how mm-hmm. they affected it. It's really cool. Uh, what, what I loved a lot was there was some fucking scenes that just blew my mind. Like I was in that theater, I kept looking over and I was just like, this is one of the coolest fucking things I've ever seen in my life. There's like these, so first of all, you know how in the trailer there's these big celestials, the big yeah. beings that they talk to. There's scenes in the movie where like they'll, they'll talk to the celestials like a human being our size will talk to a celestial being a hundred thousand times the size of it. Yeah. So when you see that like scale, you're just kind of like, holy shit. Like, and then, yeah, like, like I've visual. never seen anything like that in a Marvel movie yet. And it goes even further than that. There's like parts where you see galaxies and universes and they're just like taking you through it like a ride. And it's oh, like, wow. it feels fucking awesome. Uh, and then on the, the surprising, vi- you think critics would like that. Yeah. 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 Uh, and then uh, another thing, like I was mentioning before about like the Morbius visual effects, uh, I think what they meant in terms of the critics not liking the effects was, so like, you know, in comparison to movies like Doctor Strange or Guardians of the Galaxy, right? The, the visual effects in Doctor Strange movies are very unique because it's sorcery. It's yeah. about reality shifting and bending and stuff like that. So naturally the visual effects are going to be very like unique and very like colorful spark and even just like like i i don't know what the word is but you know you see it and you're like dr strange yeah you can tie it to that immediately almost iconic kind of and then even with like guardians of the galaxy it's sci-fi it's planets that don't really exist it's 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 weapons that don't exist it's fiction exactly so you see a lot of different things so like it's hard to compare visual effects from movies like that to visual effects in like captain america Mm because it's like what gunshots explosions yeah. you know what i mean it's still important it's still v- done very well but it's different muscle muzzle flash so in the eternals uh they without spoiling much their powers are very like i don't want to say simple flat but kind of flat they're not super crazy it's not okay. they're not very convoluted in fact the whole gist is that each one of them has like their own spiel yeah, yeah. but what i really liked is i thought that even though they're not crazy as all these other movies or whatever i thought they were handled really really well like when icarus is flying around he's the guy in the trailer with like the laser beam eyes shit like that it looks incredible like every the only thing i kept thinking about when i was watching his scenes is like i want to see a superman movie like this <laughs> I want the camera to make me feel like I'm fucking seeing this yeah. guy fly supersonic right next to me, bashing into fucking walls. I love when he like does his heat vision that like you actually see it build up in his cheeks. Like you see like the energy. Like that shit is so fucking sick. But these are like little details that a lot of people will miss out on unless they're like a visual effects person and things like that. The critics aren't obviously watching this to be like, oh, this was bad because uh Yeah, they're criticizing his, uh, like, the yeah, movies. Exactly. And, uh, the- the story itself and stuff like that or whatever and the last thing i was gonna say is uh what i th- thought was interesting and i think maybe it, people didn't fall on this that much the protagonists of the movie because keep in mind there's like a the Etern- there's a large group of them there's 10 eternals mm-hmm. but there is technically like a protagonist like one person you follow and the director intentionally made that protagonist the protagonist of the movie because uh they're not really like a fighter they're yeah. not your typical superhero protagonist. You know, they're not Thor, they're not Captain America, they're not Spider Man. In fact, they're like the kind of like the heart of the team. They're like yeah. she basically like uh she has no aggressive power. Her thing is uh it's no uh, spoiler either. Her thing is Cersei, she basically like manipulates matter. 
that she could touch yeah. this table, turn into flowers and shit like mm-hmm. that. Oh, okay. I but it's kind it's kind of cool because she uses that power and she like uh, saves the day or whatever, but in very interesting ways. It's not your typical like we killed them, we did it. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's, I it's, mean it's unique. I mean, it's, I, yeah, for sure. Really cool. And I like that a lot. Maybe people didn't like not having like the big payoff of like a huge final. War but I or like whatever. that more because it's like you're kind of not you're rooting for like the lower person, but like you're following the least impressive one yeah but like the most like heartful i guess exactly yeah that's cool so i like the Eternals a lot i'll give it a solid eight out of ten if i'm being mm, honest honestly better than the other movies. I, I give it a higher up just because it's something fresh like i said it gives i give a, a lot of credit for those like big space scenes because it's like it's something that i've haven't seen in like in any other movie to be honest something of that scale <laughs> one thing i thought was cool it is a minor spoiler but it's a spoiler for a visual effect it's not even like a story plot spoiler but there's like a part where the celestial being like he like disappears but he disappears in a black hole and it looks like the black hole from interstellar where it like it's like supposedly like accurate to like the science behind it and shit like that but it happens so fast that if you catch you're like oh shit they did that really well like it's super cool just little things like that really like was like oh yes i like when marvel does their space stuff Oh, I me think, too. I think it's more interesting than when they're always on like Earth. I mean, it's it's visually yeah. impressive for sure. Yeah, exactly. like that's, it can, and also kind of fits like grandness. It is. Yeah, exactly. yeah, it's like oh, it's not just here. We're like otherworldly. My, uh, it's cool. It's funny you say that because like my favorite. Uh, I actually have a favorite shot in the Marvel Cinematic <coughs> Universe, like okay. in terms of just shot, yeah. and it's from Endgame. It's the scene where. Uh, at the beginning of Endgame, where the remaining members who like survived the snap are getting on the ship, and they're gonna go find Thanos to make him reverse the the snap, and then they find out that he destroyed the stones, and that's mm-hmm. before they go on the time travel adventure. Mm-hmm. But there's a part where they get on, and Rocket jokingly is like, "Raise your hand if you've never been to space before," and you see like you know Black Widow and fucking uh, Captain America, they all all the hands get shot up, and they're like, "Well, you know, it's gonna be weird for you." But there's a scene where they go into hyperdrive and they go through space and the camera mm-hmm. focuses on Chris Evans, Steve Rogers' eyes mm-hmm. as it like goes through the space and you just see the reflection of like the universes and the light go by. And it's such a really fucking awesome shot because you've been following this guy since like World War Two, nineteen thirties Brooklyn, you know what I mean? <laughs> then this guy like fell into the ice and came back out in like two thousand eight or whatever the fuck it was, <laughs> and now he's going into space. space and you're watching it through his yeah, eye, like and it, not and a POV, it, it, but like looking at him. Exactly, yeah, yeah. and his uh, his reaction kind of like falls with that too. Like you could see the wonder and like the amazement in it, and it's just really like I remember the first time I saw it, I was like, "That's fucking awesome! It's so sick." I wish DC would do more of that. Shout out to America. But they had to fuck up Green Lantern. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Green Lantern would have been sick, man. <laughs> Fucking, I saw, speaking of interviews with celebrities, I was watching another uh, compilation clip of Ryan Reynolds. Mm-hmm. It was like his funniest inter- interview moments. And I think he was doing like the Breakfast Club or like a, a hip hop radio show like that. And they're like praising him. They're like, uh, they're like, Van Wilder's in the house. And Ryan Reynolds like, yep. And then they're like, uh, they said, buried. Yep. The proposal. Uh-huh. Green Lantern. Sorry. <laughs> and everybody just starts fucking crying. He just said it so fast. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he's like, he's like a nice guy too. So like, oh, yeah, I'm sure yeah, he yeah. was like, oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's so funny how quick-witted Ryan Reynolds is, man. Like, he has a joke prepped for fucking everything. <laughs> he was on a day, uh, talk, uh, morning show and somebody asked him, because you know how he always does the jokes with his wife, Blake Lively, like, yeah, he always yeah, shits yeah. on her. He did, like, one where he was, like, I think it was, like, her birthday. He was, like, happy birthday to my beautiful wife. And it's a picture of him, but he, like, cropped it so you only see, like, uh, an eighth of her face and her shoulder or whatever. And they asked her, they were, like, does she ever get mad when you do jokes like this? Like, you go home? And then his response was, like, I've never even met her, to be honest. Like, I just know her through the internet. (laughs) There was another one where they asked him. They were, like, "Uh, I heard you had a third daughter. And he's, like, yeah, three girls now. And then they were, like, how is that? How does that change, like, the dynamic in your house? And he's, like, it's, like, we added a whole nother daughter. It's crazy. (laughs) Fucking stupid. That's great. I still haven't seen Free Guy. I want to see that. I heard it was actually pretty good. I heard there were a lot of like good references. Yeah, I heard in that it. movie was really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was another movie that just came out? It starts with an N that was really good. I've heard. N. Uh, yeah, it's like a short name. I don't know. I just watched Dune. 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 Yeah, that's what it was. Dune. I Nude. <laughs> Nude. <laughs> Dune. What was? Who was in that movie? movie? Everybody, <laughs> Timothy Chalamet, Timothy Chalamet, Oscar Isaac, Oscar. Jason I mean, Oscar, Momoa, Oscar Isaac's one of my favorites. So. The, Oscar Isaac uh, is one of my favorite actors. Yeah. Also, a fucking snack, if I do say so myself. Uh, yeah. yeah, Oscar Very Isaac. Hot. Yeah. Who is that? Star Wars. He's like Hollywood's new like 
Hispanic guy Hispanic who can still guy play white guy roles. I probably know yeah. my face. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think of like a role. Yeah, no. specifically. So, did you watch Dune? I did not. Oh, okay, did I you watch Dune? It's on the. I couldn't get through it. Yeah, I mean, it's what it's it's you know. Just, it wasn't for me to be honest. Yeah, I mean, it's it, it looked cool, it looked very cool, but like I'm you know. Should have you should have put both movies out? I you, know, yeah. You should have yeah. just filmed both movies. Well, they're, they're hyping it up, you know. Like, yeah, that's the thing, and it's cool because it's like not a lot of people know the universe, mm-hmm. so you're basically just like showing everyone the universe and like setting everything up, which yeah. I get. I liked. Very sad because it's like the whole concept that there's like these worms underneath mm-hmm. the sand. Very, it's. I was really hoping for the Alaskan bullworm, Alaskan bullworm. <laughs> and it's not the Alaskan bullworm, guys. It's not. It's a different type of worm. And you just see its mouth. You never. You see like the mouth and like the tip. You never see like the whole thing. <laughs> I'm not into a bunch of those like epic films. Like I, that's that. That's how I categorize them. Like, well, like to be honest, Interstellar-ish. Kind of. Yeah, it's like very. Yeah, it's. I, that's the best way that you could describe. Like I don't know it. how to describe it. It's. It sounds very weird, and I. I understand how weird it sounds to say like I don't. There's like a lot of like big adventures. No, there's like, like there's like a lot of like there's a lot of orchestral. There's a lot of like vast open space. There's a lot of wide shots. That's like why is there such a wide? Like shot? I don't like Avatar. I don't. I'm not crazy about Lord of the Rings. Granted, I haven't given them as full a shot. Like I'm sure if I gave them a chance, yeah, I'm not and a I'd huge like fan of Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm just. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not into like lorey sci-fi. Yeah. So I think yeah. that's my thing. I'm not into sci-fi, like space sci-fi. Honestly. Not not like, sci-fi. Not you much. Not sci-fi related. Now that see, like, no, it's like on more on that Star Wars, aspect. Star Trek. Now that we're on like this, because I don't know. Weirdly enough, I feel like I don't know too much about you and your movie habits. Do you guys like Harry Potter? I don't think so, right? Um, um, I think it's alright. I read the books. Um, I do not like the movies. Okay. Um, I think, I think they're too long, and also the universe is great. Like honestly, yeah. like you could create a universe like that. That's amazing, especially when it ties back the school and magic right. and witchcraft and all that. Cool. But in terms of like the actual movies, I could I could never get into mm-hmm. them. And everyone I know, like my family, every like every ex I've had, dude, everybody obsessed. everybody knows like e- love like love, and I'm like this. holy shit because like, like I didn't like it yeah. growing up, but then like I I watched the movies or like later on and I actually I was like okay these movies are actually kind of sick like I see the the appeal mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. even then like I saw the. Uh, those Fantastic Beasts movies, which are kind of like in the same universe okay. as the as the right, Harry it's Potter like movies, a prequel or something, right? Really. Yeah, because uh, like it, Dumbledore's like mad young in them and shit like that. But uh, like even those are kind of interesting the way that they tie into the lore and stuff. But I always thought it was funny because like I never liked these movies growing up, and here I am like, oh, I kind of want to see like this one now <laughs> and shit like that. I kind of want to see the play and yeah. see how this shit like I ties mean, you're into, into the it. lore, man. It pulls you in. Yeah, <laughs> even like the the you know how they have like the play on Broadway, like the Harry Potter right. Cursed Child, like that is even like it ties into the lore oh, and shit like that. It's like mm, its own yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, it's it, not just a recreation or anything. Yeah. yeah, that you actually have to see it two days. It's a two day oh, show. Wow. Yeah. You have to go one night and you go the next night for the second part. That's dope. I think there's like one day out of the week they do them back to back where there's like a break in the middle. Intermission. Yeah, yeah. something like that. I read like the first half of the books and then like the rest of the movies I watched. I never read the books. Yeah. I read one through three, I think. Yeah, I think I read like one through three or one, or four, one through four. Something like My that. mom had them all. Because the Goblet of the Fire one was like that big and I was like, oh, hell yeah, no. Yeah, that was when I stopped. The Goblet of the Fire really one brolic, was like 600 I was like, pages. No. I was like, what? And then the movie was four hours. I'm like, what is this? My mom was, it was cool because like my mom was a big fan of the Harry Potter books when they came out, but I kind of got to like be part technically of the wave because like whenever those books would come out and like you could pre-save them and people were like oh my god like my mom was part of that because she mm-hmm. would like pre-order it and she would get it so it was like a big deal when it like came in and she got like the new harry potter book and it was like you got it type of thing yeah and, I she, remember. Yeah, yeah. and it was cool because like i didn't read them but my mom could like tell me about them they had like, like oh, really cool. iconic yeah. covers too yeah like, like they sure, really yeah. looked nice you were like oh shit like that really caught your eye yeah each one is like a different color Yo, how come there's not like like pop in like book series like that anymore I, I mean, well, like when it happened, like it was like, well, it was like Harry Potter, Twilight, Twilight Fifty yeah. Shades of Grey, Hunger <laughs> like Games, went, yeah, Hunger Games too. Um, what's the show that just uh, Ice and Fire? Oh yeah, oh, Game, Game of Thrones. Thrones. Yeah, that book series. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a show though. And that's like not even done. But that's like right? that's the. I mean, that's like the new way about it, right? Or it's like just, a, let's just, or it's like a Netflix series, you know. Yeah, I think we've been going about this content game all wrong, guys. I think should, we should write a book. We should have started with a book. About, start with a novel series, and then in ten years <laughs> we make a movie. We make a movie we based prop. on the book that was written. Definitely. Or it's like one of my favorite movies. I think I talked about this before, but the 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 Twilight parody. 
oh, yeah, film yeah, the, 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 the. where it's literally like the plot of Twilight, but the guy looks like an ogre. <laughs> and the plot twist is that the Bella of the movie has AIDS, so he can't like bite her because he'll get AIDS. Is that like epic movie? <laughs> no, no, it's like they, it's, it's like a like a like a bad. Movie. It's like they, <laughs> but they try. But what they did was they paid a woman to write a book based on the movie, but then put the book out a day before the movie, <laughs> so we they could say it's based on a movie, but it's not based on Twilight. It's based on a separate book that the yeah. book the book is <laughs> seventy pages. It's not a full book, and it has like large writing, so it's literally like not that much writing. It's like really it's rushed. Like a children's book, almost. and there's illustrations from the movie in the book, and it's like you can't say this came out before. It's like a light novel at that point. Yeah, liter or it's like a children's book. It yeah. looks like because it's like there's pictures and it's colorful. It's like what the fuck? Damn man. Yeah. Speaking of content. <laughs> And new content Like we alluded to earlier We're trying to like Some new shit mm -hmm. uh, On some new wave stuff Like we said We want to make some more Like live action Technically because We want to be part of it But more so just like I don't know Like the best way I could describe it Is I've been watching A lot of Ludwig yeah. And if there's one thing I know about Ludwig It's Ludwig shit works yeah, He has good ideas It's it's like And you know what's funny About Ludwig You know what he says Is his strategy For making content it's patented practically. He says he yoinks and he twists. He just takes other people's shit. He puts a twist on it and he puts it out. And it yeah. fucking works all the time. And I'm not saying that's what we're doing, right. but I am saying that there is just like a, there's just like a type of content that's really fun to watch. It's weirdly competitive and it has like a storyline and a type and he finds that niche. Yes. It's like and he does challenges with mm -hmm. his buds or he does like comparisons of foods but it, shit like but that. But it also, it also feels very spur of the moment. Mm -hmm. You know, it's almost like spontaneous. Exactly. It's like something you do with your friends. And it's we do like networked shows on our channel and shit like that, like the Joystick Show and like Chef Sun, but we still want to do like a video every now and then like, oh, one-offs too. One-offs. Yeah, That's one -off. what we're calling them mm -hmm. essentially. Mm -hmm. So we're trying to focus more on that because at the, in the long run, I think they will be more fun for us too. Just to and it's just like new every time, like you said, it's a new creative idea. Yeah. So it's like a new thing every time. So it's, it keeps us interested. Mm -hmm. So we already like, got like right. a bunch of those down and I'm actually excited mm -hmm. to start tackling. Because it's easier to do than like, because we, we can bring like a segment on here and that's definitely very creative. But then it's not like a game. Yeah. Or it's not like a competitive thing with all exactly. four of us. Someone has to bring, you know, it's... It be, like when we do a video specific into that, it can build hype moments. You can root for somebody. Yeah. You know what I mean? It just makes it a lot more entertaining and a lot more enjoyable. So we already got some good ideas cooking up for that. Word. Mm -hmm. Exciting. Stuff little, on the way. Little Wikipedia race between Dylan and I. Can't wait to take your name. I love Wikipedia. practicing, bro. Have, oh, reading I've, every article on Wikipedia. Oh my god! I, I mean, I used to. I, anytime I've, I've, I don't think I've ever lost. Not that I've played it much, uh -huh. but anyone I played it with, they probably didn't go on Wikipedia as much as I do. Uh -huh. And I was just like, oh, boom, boom, boom. Oh, okay, because it's like you, you look for like, because after a couple of links, they don't link it anymore. Yeah. So you have to like look at the top. You know what I saw Ludwig do that I, I really want to do? He did an IMDb race oh okay. so you can only click on imdb links on the on the wow. thing and it's really cool because it's, it's not just like actors like they'll tie the weirdest things they'll be like oh you need to get like from logan paul to like fantasia by walt disney or yeah, some yeah, shit yeah, like yeah, that yeah, you yeah. just have to connect the dots mm -hmm. somehow. you just have to go back and then you're like oh and the worst is like when you misclick and you can't go back uh -huh. that's my favorite because it's oh, like no. you fucked up you clicked on like the 2008 Women's Council of like Nigeria, and you're like, "Fuck, Just man!" Added six it was like, you know, you're like, "Oh shit, I made a huge mistake." It was also really funny watching like Ludwig and his friends do the IMDb thing because you're like watching them try to get through it. But I know like a shit ton about movies and actors and shit like that. Mm -hmm. So like as soon as they say it in my head, I'm like, "I know how I'll do it." But there was like one situation where Atrioc is uh he's playing it, and I think it was trying to get from uh, it was trying to get from like. Uh, I think it was um, like Mark Zuckerberg or something like that to like David Fincher or something okay. like that. Uh, and like it literally clicks on uh the social network and he's like, wait, this is ringing a bell. And in my head, I'm like, he directed that fucking movie. Just click on the thing. Just click director. Oh my god, that's I mean that's like a two second one. Though. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's I was like, easy. 
I was like, fuck, it's right there, man. Uh-huh. And that happened like three times in that video. I was like, bro, he made that movie. You're that like, ha- he's in that movie. Just that, happen- like that. that happens to me when uh, I watch people uh, like uh, Let's Players play like game shows. Yeah. Like an f- infamous one is Game Grumps playing Wheel of Fortune and they don't know the fucking puzzle. And it's I'm Scooby like, Doo, yeah, right? Yeah. Or it's any of them. And it's like, it happens. Or it's like, uh, 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 you know, I've Eucalyptus. <laughs> like anytime you play it, because then it's like, you know, especially if it's like one person knows something but then the other person doesn't and then it's just like oh how do you not know it you <laughs> idiot and then you don't know one then you feel like the idiot oh man hey man <laughs> gotta play Will of Fortune. <laughs> have you ever seen <laughs> bro we gotta we gotta get the freaking the, the trivia games out of here i mean out on here oh yeah. i got some ideas actually mm-hmm. yeah. get the has hasbro family fun pack got some bro, more shit you. Oh, I'll, I'll figure out how to make it <laughs> oh word. get a trivia board going and a trivia board <laughs> all right next round hangman <laughs> it's, like, right. it's uh all the trivia questions pertain to that weather website you made <laughs> like what is the weather in ontario canada right now what is the average temperature in dubai <laughs> fuck it uh no i was like i don't think jerry's ever seen it but there's a really funny fucking achievement hunter clip where they're playing jeopardy I forgot who's playing it. I think it's like uh, it's a weird combo. It's like Jack, Michael. I think it's it's Ray for sure. I uh, think Ryan, Ray, Ryan, Gavin. Yeah, that's Trivia Tuesdays. Yeah, yeah, that's Trivia Tuesdays. Yeah. So first off, fuck Ryan. Yeah. Secondly, uh, fucking, uh, there's a really famous scene where they're playing Jeopardy, and the question is like, uh, the panda eats is a vegetarian and eats this type of plant. No koala or. Yes. No, it was it was it was panda. Oh, and then oh, the, yeah, yeah, and yeah, the yeah, three yeah. answers come up, and it was Ben. And, and but the whole joke was Ray couldn't get like the Ray couldn't get any of the questions, so he finally like buzzes in and grabs it, and it, and it shows like bamboo, like Which mint or something one. like that. But and he you, fucking picks eucalyptus, and he's just like eucalyptus, and everyone's like you, and everybody's like you bro, know yeah, and he's like I don't bamboo? fucking know, and bamboo. then he picks it, and he's like oh, <laughs> there's like a picture of it. He's like yeah, yeah it's like eating it? bamboo, yeah. Like every photo I've seen of a panda, it's on eating. Not even bamboo. that. Everybody knows that like yeah. the only animal that eats bamboo like that is fucking pandas. <laughs> no one's gonna see a fucking whale. Eucalyptus is what like koalas. Yeah, 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 that's why I said it. Yeah. Koalas. That's the Aren't koalas. they like they have chlamydia? Like violent. I don't know. I just know they have chlamydia. Yeah. They have chlamydia. Eucalyptus makes them tired, which is funny. That's why they sleep so much. And apparently, they're violent. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think yeah. I don't think they let you do shit. Capybara is a cool uh, love of capybara. Uh, Dylan, Dylan's a capybara yeah. fan. Because the thing is about capybara is that they have like no enemies and they don't, they like eat bugs and like small little animals. So like they just sit and they eat like trees and shit too. So they just like sit around all day because they have no enemies. And so they're just like, <laughs> what's up? And like you just like, I remember a woman. What are we doing t- today? A woman was like, can I put it on my, she's like, can I put it on my lap? And they were like, no, but like you can like like put your lap like towards it and it just goes on its lap i'm like fuck bro i want a capybara and i've seen i've seen like photos of like people on craigslist selling them for like 10k and shit Jesus. wait like, why don't they have like predators is it just like their region yeah where they yeah, live like i forget live, yeah yeah where they live they live in like a region in like the amazon where like no other animals live or something like yeah, that i was about to say like that thing is like mad chubby like that's a that's, that's a, an easily killable a, animal yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. well like they <laughs> yeah they, they have no they have no, nothing that kills them i think that's like the only thing that would kill them were like poisonous snakes and shit like that yeah mm-hmm. but like and even then that's just because like the plants or whatever yeah mm-hmm. but i don't know i want a capybara Guys, if if this if this channel takes off, we I need a capybara. That's yeah. like my first. It's your first, uh, <laughs> yeah. first rich person purchase. Mm-hmm. It's like I got a cage in the back. It's like yeah, I got my chickens. I got my capybara. Get him the a hang couch. Out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like a little like. A... <laughs> I'm mad. We we've almost gone through the whole podcast. Nobody's brought up my sick ass Chris Angel mind free hoodie. <laughs> you see this sweet merch? Look at this, bro. Ooh. Look at that font. Look at that oh, killer, right? Amazing. I follow uh, Chris Angel on Facebook. Nice. So, so you know what's funny? <laughs> you remember when you first got a Facebook? What a, what a sentence. I follow Chris <laughs> Angel on Facebook. No, but this is where I'm going with this. Remember when you first got a Facebook? Like, you know, I beginning liked, of high school or, liked, like, or like the end of, gr- of junior high, I right? Mean, I had one like seventh grade, eighth grade. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, you, and you fucking liked 
every page that I, you, I you liked know. Michael Jackson right every, every like, website I liked every... whose line is it anyway I liked all these comedians bro, they popped up on the side like 20 of them every yeah, day yeah, just yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I like that app I play I on like, my iPhone I like touch. 80s music <laughs> you know everything whatever <laughs> I like the guy who does hair at the Queen Center yeah so you just you click all this shit when you're younger but now for some reason like half of those people like rely on Facebook to get all their content on and shit like that so you just get all like Jamie Kennedy and Cypress Hill and all these fucking like random people and they're like these big Facebook shooters like with their content on it and they're and like since I liked their stuff like fucking 10 years ago they're like oh you like me right and I'm like 10 years ago I liked you but now I'm like now. now I'm watching like Jamie Kennedy's podcast and all this fucking weird shit but one of those people is Chris Angel. So, I, you know, I was big into magic back in the day. So I, I have him on Facebook. But, like, he's into all these weird, like, business ventures now. Like, he just recently opened up, like, a breakfast and lunch spot in Vegas. Okay. But it has, like, nothing to do with magic. It's all just, right. like, a restaurant. Nice. Like, I don't know how to explain he's it. He's just, it's, like, an entrepreneur now. It's like he made a Johnny Rockets. like, But it's a Chris oh. Angel's Johnny Rockets, okay. like, apparently. It's called, it's called, like, BLP or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but all I know is this guy was fucking promoting it. For I like how months, you're watching. Man. I like how they're giving you content you don't want, and you're like, yeah. <laughs> fucking. That's like that's like someone scrolling TikTok. Thanks, like Chris I hate Angel. this. I love it. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for this garbage I didn't want. <laughs> but I can't shit on it because I am happy. That's how I discovered the uh, the great. Uh, what is it? Bar Rescue was on Facebook. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, that's the occasionally I'll find. Uh, there are two pages I really like. Um, that I, I still get a lot of my memes from Facebook, like the bad ones. Yeah. I get from Facebook. I'm so, yeah. I'm sorry. This is the laziest fucking restaurant. I, it's called BLP. It stands for Breakfast, Lunch, Pizza. <laughs> You're telling me you are like the most profitable, arguably the most recognizable magician in the world, and, and you, you make a non-magic themed restaurant. And you it's put lame. Your name on it. And it's, it's lame. Horrible. Uh, what the fuck? Pull this up. I mean, I'm hungry now. <laughs> Pull this garbage up. <laughs> I, I'm just mad. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm not expecting him to, like, you know, every time a waiter comes, he pulls your fucking food out of his sleeve or something. But, you know, like, it's not even dark, like, his whole kind of, like, shtick. It's literally just, like, a fucking fast casual eatery. Bro. It's not even in Vegas. No, it is. Oh, it's I don't think Mopo it's in Valley. Vegas, but it's, it's in, in Overton. It's, yeah. It's That's mad far. It's it is. It's away from Vegas. I'm gonna open a restaurant that sucks 45 minutes. <laughs> I don't even know. I mean, it looks all right. But probably. hey, shout outs to Chris. You know, that's why I'm wearing the sweater to support yeah. him, my boy. You know, fucking homie. And totally not because I didn't have anything else to wear. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, 128. What are you gonna wear on the podcast? You're wearing like fucking a, te- a wife beater Bro. that's purple. You're like, yeah. I'm wear a different Minecraft hoodie. <laughs> You're wearing your mom. I said clothing. Minecraft. <laughs> You're wearing, the you're, wearing like, you're, pull up, uh, you're wearing your pull up. You're wearing No, you're wearing your, like your dad's like military shit. Like you're wearing like random. Now nah, I'm gonna wear one of those like gangster SpongeBob shirts where he's like sagging his yeah. pants, yeah. stacks of cash that's behind the gangster era. front. Oh hell yeah. yeah! Oh man, that's 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 in now. That's vintage. It is officially jamming <sighs> and yerm. Hell yeah! Yeah. That's not how you pronounce it. I added oh. one song since last week. So that's the only I jam any, of the but week. I added I had to like songs. It's the so. only jam of the week. It's a Joey Perp song. It's called Elastic. It's pretty cool. Go check Ooh. it out. And that's 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 that. You like how I had it on Ooh. I didn't have to check my phone or fucking Ooh. anything. I oh. had to check my phone. Just kidding, I don't. Uh this my yam of the week is Blood, Sweat and Tears by Uno the Activist. Ooh. Uh, very oh. good artist. Rap. I would kind of describe grab him like gonna kind of but like more indie i guess all right uh i remember i found him because i was watching i was like i wonder what he looks like and the most popular video on youtube is not his music videos or anything like that but it was a video of um of a journalist who covers a lot of like young indie rappers and yeah. stuff like that and he's like really big <laughs> <laughs> i've never what? made that noise in my life I like went to say yeah, but it escaped out of a little hole, so I went. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I found this video, and it was like basically he has this show, which is really cool, where like he plays horse with an artist. 
like, like basketball. basketball. Okay, but it's supposed to be an interview. But when he has Uno the activist on, they get way too competitive. So mm-hmm. they just go back and forth and play horse. They're like, all right, you got to do this. Go over here. Touch the water bottle. <laughs> knock it over. Do fade away. <laughs> and they make it like a whole thing. It's like a 12-minute video. And then it like it, it cuts to like the yeah, conclusion. Yeah, yeah. He's like, hey, guys. He's like in his like bedroom. He's like, hey, guys. What's up? Thanks for checking this out. Just realized that wasn't an interview. <laughs> we just play <laughs> horse. <laughs> but I was like, but then I watched other ones and they actually do an interview. And, I'm uh-huh. like, and I was like, damn, I didn't even, I didn't even figure anything out. Out about this guy. about this person but he can ball <laughs> he can hoop yeah <laughs> he can hoop yeah damn crazy we got, we got two rap ams what are we what are Bro, we, we got seeing? another rap coming Woo! We got jpeg mafia oh you dropped an album right? lb yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the album's called lp which is yeah. funny so uh the song is sick nervous and broke hey yeah we got blood, sweat, and tears, yeah, and we, we got, got sick, nervous, we got and broke. A shout out. Sorry, I didn't jump on the Oxford comma. <laughs> <laughs> All right, my, title of the week. I, I'll switch my my yam is now Oxford comma by Vampire <laughs> Weekend. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. What's your what, guys? What's your opinion on the Oxford comma? Yes or no? Yes, I'm a big yes. I'm a big proponent of the Oxford comma. Don't be lazy. Most Add times, yes. Most times, yes. Add that shit. Most of the time, sometimes it doesn't fit. <laughs> I feel like if the two final things are related, then you don't do it. Right? Yeah. All righty. Uh, yeah, yeah, I feel that. So go check out, uh, go check out our AMS of the week. Go and, check out uh, the Oxford comma. Yeah. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for checking out the Joystick Show. Check out some new content we have coming your way pretty soon. Oh, totally something I wanted to mention on the podcast, but we went a complete hour without mentioning it. Uh, in about one, two, three, four, five days time. Ooh, right. Dylan and I are gonna be in Puerto Rico, my motherland. Ooh. Got Hell some yeah. unique for, uh, for my 25th birthday, and you best believe that when two fifths of the of Team Joystick travel to Puerto Rico, that some shit Name is gonna the, get the done. The main people of the podcast, <laughs> yeah, you know, the hosts of the Joystick <laughs> Show. You best believe some shit is gonna get done. So uh, hopefully, when you watch the show next week, we're not gonna be in the basement. We will be in my head. We're gonna be poolside with like cocktails, <laughs> looking real good. But, but it's point not. is, we're gonna be outside. It's gonna. It's not gonna be here. It's gonna. It's look- like, hey. Hey. It's mad loud. Yeah, I told Dylan writer. I was like, we're gonna be a couple of island boys yeah. for a while. Just have your like have your island dad boy come, drink. Have your dad come in the background. Like, <laughs> <laughs> apparently we're apparently where we're staying is like uh, it's like five minutes away from a rainforest. Yeah, yeah. I've, I will. I looked it up on the map. So because uh, yeah. uh, in order to fill out the travel stuff, maybe Dylan and I'll do a little mama. rainforest chronicles. Well, little... they I saw there's like trails and like waterfalls yeah. and stuff like that, and I'm like I definitely want to do maybe like no, we are gonna go hiking. Yeah, okay, for sure. yeah. And then I'm thinking like right next to like a zip line place. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll figure something. Out. Oh, for sure. Will there be yeah. any guests? Yeah. On the podcast oh we should right oh my god <laughs> we should just bring people in randomly yeah, yeah, like, like, every, like, like fi- cycle them we'll, in we'll have a chair we'll have yeah, like, yeah, a third yeah. chair be like all right yeah, yeah, come thanks on. dad come yeah. on in uh fucking my cousin caitlin yeah <laughs> man funny yeah man so stay tuned for that we got some fire content both uh both here and not here coming up pretty soon uh and by that i mean like in the basement and not in the basement uh, so get get used to seeing some cool new one-offs, like we said, and also just uh, some Island Boy stuff between me and Dill. Yeah. Other than that, thanks for joining us. Make sure to go ahead and like. Make sure to go and I can't even fucking speak. Do the YouTube thing. Make sure yeah, to do all that. the YouTube stuff the YouTube that we always say. To tell you, know, you every time. And yeah. fucking you do it every time. I need to start uploading the graphic, so it just <laughs> pops up here, and you're like, everyone. Oh, okay. ha- everyone always has a different subscribe graphic. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's a pop. Sometimes one guy had like a wiggle one. I was like, what the fuck is this? Fucking uh, and uh, Dylan, are they commenting anything? anything uh, what fucking movie have you watched recently? That's Give us point. a movie suggestion. Me and Dylan are going to be spending like five days in an Airbnb, so if you need, we're going to probably watch a couple movies. So Cuddle. You know, for sure. Fuck. Big, I don't know about that, man. <laughs> Come on, that's that's off-camera stuff. We can't talk about that on this show, man. I mean, uh, do workouts. <laughs> <laughs> With our butts. 